Dr. Seuss's Nietzsche's Get Stitches and Other Life Lessons will not be seen today. In this place, we bring the following presentation that serves as a reminder of what happens when you know too much. The Haunted Fear! The Vault of Horror! Come in, creeps! If your old man won't come along, then drop that! <laughs> It's your vault keeper again, inviting you into the vault of horror for another revolting reading from my crawling collection of terror tone. I call this yub yon only sin deep. deep. Night shrouded the city. The man lay in the darkness of the alley, unaware in his alcoholic stupor of the pilfering hands that rode him for the tawdy treasure in his pocket. His watch shone in a yellow gleam watching the gleam of the woman's calculating eyes. She laughed at the male pickup of an evening. Men were her fools, her pawns, her prey in this grim game of life. Lorna Vanson laughed again in a throaty purr as a tigress over her kill. <laughs> Thanks, Buster. Thanks a lot. She moved through the night, wearied of her precarious occupation, scheming of bigger prey. She had the one thing that sowed high among men. Beauty. Beauty to drive men wild. Innocent, wide-eyed Madonna beauty, masking the greediness beneath. Beauty that made men turn and look and lust. Hello, honey. Lonesome? Job dead, Buster. I'm busy. She would have none of them now. Not anymore. Not if she could sell her beauty for what it was really worth at its highest price, to the highest bidder. But beauty like hers was no good hidden in rags, buried in poverty, like a jewel obscured in a dull, leaden setting. What I need is a steak, fancy clothes, a beauty shop treatment, the works, and this watch can get it for me. The pawn shop she found was a hole in the wall, musty and decrepit, and its proprietor seemed just as musty and decrepit as he rubbed his gnarled hands greedily, taking her offering, only to toss it back at her in scorn. Ah! Worthless imitation! Gold! It belongs in a junkyard! Out of pity, I'll give you a dollar for it! A dollar? Is that all? All her dreams tumbled, expecting so much more. She turned away, her lovely face twisted in bitter rage. But even that did not hide its classic perfection. The old pawnbroker called her back, his eyes narrowing. Wait, your face! Love your brown eyes, spun silver hair, glowing lips. Listen, I have a proposition. At your age, Grandpa, sorry, I like them both feet. You misunderstand. My only mistress is money, always faithful and trustworthy. This is strictly business. I offer you $1,000 for your beauty. Is it a bargain? 1000 uh, Did you say $1,000? She thought him mad, but he counted out the money before her eyes. Then he led her into the back room and seated her in a chair. You mean, all you want is this wax mold of my face? Yes, my dear, call it a hobby of mine, capturing beauty like yours. She did not like his final cackling words as he handed her a pawn ticket, but she put it down to the follies of the age. In case you ever wish to redeem your beauty. Oh, fool. She absently stuck the ticket into her purse as she left the foolish old man shot. But the last on him. Exciting days followed for Lorna, preparing the lure, the seductive bait for the hunt to follow, the deadly female on the prowl, the oldest game in history. I'll take this dress, Madam Sonia. Do a good job, Emil. Now you're ready, baby. The board doorman of the Squint Club 7-Eleven swung open a taxi door one evening. He'd seen an endless parade of beauty triumphs into the club during his years, and none had rated more than half a glance to his sated eyes. But that night, his eyes snapped wide. <gasps> a vision! I feel sorry for the other dames inside. Their evening is ruined the moment this stunning beauty marches in. Heads turned around as Lorna was conducted to a table. Women's faces froze, still smiling, with hate flushing beneath. Hate for this creature who suddenly turned them into blowsy frumps in comparison. More champagne, Charlie? Eh, yeah, Charlie? Charlie! Oh, shut up! Let me drink that in! 
but Lorna ignored them all. Her prey was picked. Ronnie Outgild III, bachelor, playboy, human gold mine. He was always there with his following of uncrowned Miss Americas. But Lorna was glad they were there. She needed them as a comedian needs a straight man. Hey, I thought I knew every gorgeous doll in this town. How did I miss you, baby? Why you? She struck him hard. He struck him hard. This man she wanted to win and marry. She bruised his cheek and left the deeper pool. Despicable wolf! But Lorna had played her game with age-old shrewdness, with womanly wile. For she knew that to men, the forbidden fruit promised always the sweeter taste. Get lost, trash! I want to meet that angel! No early girl could be so lovely! <laughs> Here he comes, my fool! Was there ever any doubt? It took Lorna six months of hard work, always leading with her chin, to get her quarry head. But at last, Lorna, honey, uh, no lips have ever tasted the same since yours. I must have them for my own, for life. Marry me. Oh, Ronnie, yes, yes, I'll marry you. And so, wedding bells, the honeymoon, and Lorna moved into the earthly paradise she'd always craved. Mistress of a mansion full of servants, wealth, and luxury. Ronnie, deeply in love, showered her with costly gifts. And Lorna loved deeply in return. His bank account, that is. Oh, you wonderful sweet darling. Breath of spring mink. It's beautiful. It's the newest shade. And here's something else to gild. The lily trouble is. Even diamonds look cheap against your radiant beauty. Secure in the lap of luxury, Lorna winked at her mirror each night. But one night, she frowned, looked again in perplexity, then a third time in worry. Lines on my face? But, but that's impossible! I'm young! I'm only 23! Oh, I slept poorly last night. It must be that iron line. They'll be gone tomorrow. But they weren't gone the next morning, or the next or many necks, until Lorna knew that something dreadful was happening to her youthful face, and the old saying came to torment her. Beauty is only skin deep. Worse and worse, almost like wrinkles of, of old age. <laughs> I just gotta hide it from Ferrati. Thank goodness he's going away for a few days. I'll be able to see a doctor. Well, hon, I'll see you Thursday. I, hey. Aren't you overdoing the rouge and powder, Lorna? It's a waste, really, with such lovely smooth peach blossom skin like yours to hide its natural beauty. Oh, uh, I have a red nose, dear. Think I'm coming down with a cold. Got to hide it. As soon as Ronnie left, Lorna called the best skin man in the city. I'd like to see you, doctor. Yes, Tuesday morning. Fine, I'll be there. Lorna's uneasiness faded during the examination. Modern science could cure almost any odd affliction. But when the dermatologist turned with puzzled eyes and whispered, Where? Somehow your facial tissues are aging. Aging at a much faster rate than your body. Your skin is, well, dying. The cure, you fool! I'm rich! I'll pay anything! Heavily veiled, Lorna left his office. His helpless reply booming like a gong of doom in her mind over and over. No cure. No cure at all. Science has never been able to halt the aging process. No doctor can stop your skin from dying. Why had this happened to her? Her of all women. Why? Suddenly, Lorna remembered that night, that night so long ago. Frantically, she rushed home searched among her personal odds and ends, and finally found it. The beauty of Lorna Vanson lawfully pawned to Simeon Sykes, licensed pawnbroker, redeemable at original price of $1,000, plus interest, in one year from January 13, 1953. Simeon Sykes. That old wretch, his funny way of saying it, buying my beauty, and this ticket, my beauty pawn redeemable. Just as he, if he really took it away somehow. She pushed the pawn ticket into her purse and hurried out into the night, down crooked, deserted streets. It can't be. It's silly, black magic. Yet I hope it's true that I can redeem my beauty. 
L lucky I kept this old pawn ticket. Let's see, his shop was around here somewhere. Finally, she found the dilapidated old shop, tugged open the creaky door, and stumbled into its unkempt, musty gloom, still presided over by the evil human spider who had bargained so cunningly with her, with her, a year and a million dollars ago. She ripped off her veil in fury, exposing the hideous monstrosity that now reposed on her young, lovely shoulders. Did you do this to me, you filthy old fool? Did you? Certainly, my dear. See, here's your beauty among my pawn wares. Here, here's your thousand dollars. I must have my beauty back. I must. But, my dear, that's impossible. The date, you forgot. The final date to a day was January 13th, yesterday. You're too late. Of course you can buy your beauty back, but at my price now. Let's see, as Mrs. Ronald Outgild the third, you should be able to afford, let's see, a hundred thousand dollars. What? A hundred thousand dollars? How could I ask my husband for that? Much out of the clear blue sky. Besides, if he saw my face now, yes, he'd probably divorce you and turn from your hag face and be sick on the floor and kick you out. So, think it over. Business is business. A hundred thousand dollars, not one cent less. Good night. Please, oh please. She stood outside the shop, shivering in the cold, and then she thought of a way, a desperate way to raise the money. My jewels, my meat coats, all the expensive gifts for Ronnie. Together, they might total a hundred thousand dollars. I'll tell them we were robbed. Her face veiled hiding the hideous hag horror beneath. She was able to enter her house only because the servants recognized her young voice. Who do you think it is, you fool? Step aside! I'm going to bed! If anybody calls, I'm asleep! Yes, Mrs. Altgeld. In the safety of her room, where she could lift the stuffy veil, she wasted no time in piling up all she gained from her husband's golden generosity. Hate to part with them, but I must get my beauty back before Roddy returns from his trip. I... Hey, hey, what's going on here? She heard his voice. Too late. Roddy, he returned unexpectedly. She had no chance to turn, to run, to hide from his eyes. <gasps> oh my god, that face, ugly, horrible. Who are you? What are you doing rifling in my wife's room? How could she reveal she was Lorna, his beautiful wife? No, there was another way. Let him think her a burglar. Run. No, you don't, sister. I'm holding you for the police. She struggled with him, realizing, The police? Oh no, 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 no! Then I'll be trapped in jail! Never pay off the bomb broker! Never be able to prove I'm Lorna Algild! No! There's only one other way! One last way! Yes, only one final way. One final way for Roddy. Lorna reached for the heavy brass statuette. So this jump has to die! So what? The important thing is to get my beauty back with my golden asset! Plenty of other rich idiots like Roddy around to bid for it! Again and again, she swung her instrument of murder. Roddy's oh. first groan sank to a holy oh. bone and then faded to oh. the belching gusts of a fresh corpse losing its fluids and gases. She looked back at the still figure only once, then left by the window with all that remained of his foolish love packed in a suitcase. Perfect! Signs of a struggle. Room looted, all adding up to homicidal burglary by persons unknown. She hurried to the pawn shop with her treasure. Locked, closed for the night. Now I'll have to wait until morning. Find a hotel. She left peacefully. Why shouldn't she? Her problem was solved. Her troubles almost over. Early in the morning, she left the hotel, almost gaily. More paper, read all about it. The murders, servants, five body of Ronald Outgale the third. The servants? <laughs> She'd forgotten about the servants. She snatched the paper, stared at the headlines. Wanted for murder. Mrs. Lorna Outgale, if you see this woman, notify the police. Servants have testified that Mrs. Outgale returned home last night, minutes before her husband, Ronald. They observed her leaving the house via the bedroom window shortly after his death. She is known to be wearing a veil. The policeman stood behind her. 
reading over her shoulder. Too bad, pretty face too. Now it's a one-way ticket to the electric chair. Uh, say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I, well, I have my orders. I understand, officer. You want me to remove my veil so you can be sure I'm not that murderous. Lorna lifted the veil slowly and watched as the policeman's face paled and then grew sickly green as he clapped his hands to his mouth. <gasps> Satisfied, officer? And she knew that she could never redeem her beauty now. She knew that she was stuck with this horrible, nauseating hag face for all of her life. Unless she wanted it to end in the electric chair. <laughs> so Lorna ended up stuck with a dead man. <laughs> Well, there's many a wife who'll say the same about their husbands. Now it's time to turn you back to the old witch for one of her idiotic slime servings. <laughs> Remember, if you are addicted to EC mags, if you're a real god fan, <laughs> then you ought to join the EC fan at a club. Why? Well, uh, that is, uh, uh, hmm. Look, I'll see you the next in my mag, the Vault of Horror. Bye now. Oh, I almost forgot. You should subscribe to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Reviews YouTube channel for more EC read alouds of Comics Come Alive with yours truly, the Vault Keeper, the Grid Keeper, and the Old Witch. Why? Why not? Would it kill you? Oh, I'll leave it in your hands. Bye for now.